This is the plaintiff, Chrissy Cowwoo. He says he was driving in the middle lane of the highway when he got the shock of his life. The defendant decided to get into his lane without looking where she was going, and she crashed into the side of his front bumper. She hit into it very hard, but instead of pulling over, she took off like a jackrabbit. He chased the crazy woman, cornered her at a red light, then found out she had no insurance and was driving a rental. Bottom line, the woman refuses to pay for the damage she 100% caused. And he's suing her for every penny of the $1,276.30 he's most definitely due. This is a defendant, Tanasia Washington. She says the plaintiff was the one who sideswiped the back end of her driver's side, then claimed the accident was her fault, which it most definitely was not. This nasty man has caused her so much unnecessary stress and grief over something he caused. And if anyone's owed money today, it's her. She's accused of not looking where she's going. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $1,276.30 for car repairs and emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant crashed into her and booked it. But the defendant says the plaintiff was at fault. It's in the case of hit and run ain't fun. Okay. You say it's her fault, she says it's your fault. Let me hear from you first. Why don't you come over here to this board and tell me what happened? So I was driving. You can pick a car to be you, any car. So I was going, heading home because I don't live far. So. Take another car and make it her. So on my way, focusing, I just had a bum just across my So she's my in the bumper. middle lane trying to come into the, yes. the left lane. Yes. And you were traveling already in the left lane. I was already on the left. OK. And I stopped. And I saw a white vehicle, and I thought she was going to stop. And as I was trying to come out of the car, she took off. OK. And she made a left turn. OK. And I quickly got into the car and followed her and came to the light, and I stopped her right here. And she's saying she's trying to park. She's trying to park. I said, park where? OK, go ahead and go back there. And so what were her words to you when you both got out of the car and started talking? Um, she, sound, she was very stunned. And she was like, oh, oh my god, I'm a new driver. And right there, then I asked her, do you have an insurance? She looked at me, she said, it's a rental vehicle. She had no insurance. I said, wow. Well, so, did, you did you buy insurance when you rented the car? Did you include insurance in it? No. You declined the insurance? And do you have your own insurance? No. Uh, what do you think? It's not mine. That's how you. That's how. That's your entrance into the the world of driving. It wasn't my rental. It was my mother's rental. Well, what is your mother thinking? Mm -hmm. So your mother rented the car. Mm -hmm. And you're not even an authorized driver on it. No. Do you have a license? Yes. May I see it? So now the cars are stopped. Do you guys call the police? I did not call the police. I decided to say, okay, let's exchange information. If you agree to pay for my bump, we will do something about it. OK, do you have a picture of the bump? Yes, I do. Um, what day did this accident happen? On the, April 14. Oh my gosh, two days after you got your license. You were a fresh driver, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so you hit the car pretty good, huh? Do you have pictures of the damage to your car? Yes. May I see them? How, what year car is this? It's 2004. All right. So you go home. She tells you, I've spoken to my people, and they'll do it for 100 bucks. Correct. And then you tell her, well, let me review that. Then you speak to your people, I guess, and they'll do it for how much? Uh, I, when I took it to a workshop, the guy looked at it and said, oh, I can pin this for 200 bucks. I call her. So then she kind of said, are you out of your mind? I offer you $100. I can even take you to where this bumper can be fixed. Tell me you who refuse. was willing to do it for $100. Uh, 
the auto body shop because the reason why my mother had a rental is because her sh car was in the shop. So the same person that was doing her car, he was going to do his car. He's not explaining it. Yeah, how. but did you? Okay, so let me ask you first. Let me find out from you how you say the accident happened. Come on over to the board and put the cars where you say they happened. This is me, and this is him. He was never over here. I was indicating my signal to go into the left lane. Is, I mean, aren't there cars in that lane? It's about one or two cars that was in front, but they was just making it to this, like, to the intersection. I'm sorry. Street. Where? Where are the row of cars that are here? What are the, there's nobody here? There wasn't nobody over this way. That's why I was going into this lane. But he was on riding my tail. And so I guess he was trying to come over here. By the time he came over, he hit me. Exactly how? Because I, I need you to, I, I know where the damage on the cars are. So yeah, go ahead and show he, me he now. He sideswiped me right here while I was trying to get over. And okay, the only reason show why, me the damage to your car. My car damage is on this side. And that, I, it was my initiative to stop over here because I'm not stopping on a three-way lane. And he, that's how he got in front of me to curve me in like this, on this exact road when we got onto Evergreen Place. Right. So, I'm like, okay, but, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Yarna. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody flees the scene of an accident, are they automatically at fault? It doesn't look good for their case, but theres I don't believe it's an automatic admission of guilt. Is it an admission if they flee the scene? It's not an admission of guilt, no. Well, what is it if they flee the scene? I think they'd be considered a person of interest, though. Person of interest. Okay, going inside the courtroom. So if you, if you feel like the guy cut you off and damaged your car and it's all his fault, why are you checking with people about how much because, it'll cost to fix his car? Because Because you act guilty is what I'm no saying. Because no insurance and I didn't want this to find out to my mom. And she found out anyway and it was a big problem. Yeah, but how does your mom not know? She, she would know because... No, you... she wasn't going to know because I already have contact to the guy. He was just going to mix the paint up for me. No, what I meant is, is if you're... If that, wait a minute. If you're... You're just a <laughs> wheeler <laughs> dealer. You're just sinking yourself further. <laughs> Listen to my question. Didn't your mother rent the car so she knows she rejected insurance? Yeah, but she wasn't going to find out about, about an scratch. accident. Yes. Oh, okay. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. I was trying to prevent that. Okay. But she found out anyway once he hit me with the lawsuit in the mail, and that yeah. was a big How'd problem. How'd that go? How'd that go over? It's crazy. So <laughs> did you take the let me drive again. So did this you take him. the rental car to that guy to fix the rental car scratches? Well, yes. What, what do you and mean, well, yes? Did he or didn't he? He did patch it up, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but you can't tell that anything So did was you wrong. return it to, to the yes. rental agency? Did they say they anything about it? They still found out about it because mm. um, it's like a $481 thing they want me to pay. Okay, so they, they looked at it and said, what the heck is this patch <laughs> job done? But, but that's the job you want him to accept. Mm. No, for his car, I actually would have had the man mix up the paint, because it's a code in the car that you have to scan, that they have to mix up the paint, it's a special paint, you can't just slap any paint onto his car. And I oh, know so for this. his car you do it Right, better. I was gonna You'd pay. go that extra mile. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind You weren't doing trying that. to just bury stuff and get your own problems over with. Yeah, and I didn't <laughs> mind my, I didn't mind my well, car. The, but the rental car's not your car. The rental car belongs to the rental car agency. You were yeah, totally but... willing to snow them. <laughs> You got caught on that. You got caught with your mama. You got caught with the... <laughs> All right, so let me ask you a question. All of a sudden, your 200, I'll take $200, becomes 1276.30. Why? Why does that happen? When I went to the workshop, the, the mechanic looked at it. He said, wow, your bumper is really broken. So you got an estimate for replacing the front bumper. Yes, ma'am. Which is a lot more than just painting it. But yes. your answer to that is, why should I let her get away with the 200? Because according to him, you were kind of nasty when he called you and told you 200. Mm-mm. No? Mm -hmm. Yarna, when he called me, he specifically said to me that um, I have an estimate. I said, OK. And I told him, you know, well, I have a mechanic, and he's willing to, you know, patch it up. <laughs> he's telling me. 
You can't just slap any old paint onto my car. It has to be the right paint. And if it ain't right, you're still going to be responsible for it. This is how he was talking to me. And I said to him, I'm not your child. That's what I said to him. It's like, it, for $200, you could have made the whole thing go away. Don't you regret it a little? You could say it. Come on, we all know. No, I don't. Because I the reason do. why his car is banged I up. I think you do. His car banged up more than mine's because he hit me. So why am I going to pay? Yeah, that's not. A, the car being banged up more than yours yeah. is not a result of him hitting you. That's not how it works. The, the best evidence I have of the problem, when I've got you trying to figure out how am I going to fix this, how am I going to fix this, you know, it doesn't sound like he hit you and, you know, it's all his fault. And it sounds like you, Ms. Washington, are taking responsibility. And if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. But wait, there's more. You have a counterclaim against him for mm, $1,276.30 exactly what he's suing you for. Mm -hmm. And what is the theory there? Four hundred and eighty-one fifty to repair the car that the rental company is now suing you for, your mom, and the rest of it for emotional distress. Yes, because ever since I received the letter in the mail, I've been having severe headaches, <laughs> and I've been taking Motrin every day. Ever since you got the lawsuit? Yes. Okay. I've been stressed out. Are you sure the headaches aren't from your mother screaming at you? No. <laughs> from this, I want it to be over. <laughs> I, I'm going to rule against you, but I just want to hang out with you. you were, I could listen to you talk all day. You, in your mind, you're so justified. I love that. That kind of comp, two days driving, $200. How dare you? When I could get it done for 100 like you've been doing this your whole life. If I could take what you have and bottle it up, I'd sell it on the open market, you know? <laughs> Okay, but you and I both know um, you have a car. It's kind of long in the tooth, right? 14 years old. See, you got a quote for replacing a bumper. I can go get this. That doesn't mean I need replacing. You understand? I hear what you're saying. Why I'm, should you give her the benefit of the bargain? I, I get that. Empathy about the whole thing for her. I sympathize with her, even though I don't sympathize she, with her. She, I just like her. I just I don't <laughs> sympathize with her. I think she's super nervy for someone who who is you know been driving for two days and who has so much to hide. I gotta hide from my mother. I had an accident. I gotta hide from the rental company that the car got damaged. I don't feel sorry for her. I just enjoy her. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna rule in your favor in the amount of $800 on your counterclaim against him. Don't be ridiculous. Zero. That's my judgment. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff is going to have to, or rather the defendant's going to have to give the plaintiff $800. I know you've been having a lot of <laughs> headaches and things like that. Yes. You think it's going to make you feel better now that it's over? Yes. I just want this behind me. What did your mother say to you, really, when she found out? that I'm a liar and I tried to hide the evidence and all these types of stuff and the paperwork came in the mail. What happens in the dark comes to the light. That's what she said. It was not good, was it? No. <laughs> Has she calmed down? Yes. Okay. Well, listen, thank you very much. Sorry it happened to you on your second day as a new driver, but, you know, what can I say? All right, you're going to get money. Are you going to replace a bumper or not? What I will think? replace it. The car got to look good. Car got to look good, yeah. like you. You're That's looking awesome. good. Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank All right, you. congratulations. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. much. Right. You do look very sharp. Thank you. Okay, Harvey? You know, we get this a lot in the people's court where people, you know, they cause damage to, some, to a car, and they say, come to my repair shop. I've got a guy who will do it cheap. If you have the car that was hit, you don't have to do that. You can choose the repair shop. You don't have to do the one they say you should go to. You can choose whatever repair shop you want and get it done there. The only caveat is wherever you go, the price still has to be reasonable.